This trip to the countryside will be good for you, Holmes. Hmm. As your friend and your doctor, I really do recommend that you give yourself a complete change of scene. Fresh air, brisk walks, bird watching, chopping wood. Sounds intolerable. I mean, certainly it sounds delightful. But you haven't yet told me who your friend is. The one we're going to visit. He is a bee lover. A bee lover? Do you mean that he keeps bees? That must be Mrs. Hudson, bringing the warm cloth that I requested. There is someone to see you, Mr. Holmes. I have no time. Send whoever it is away. Yes, Holmes, I really think we ought to leave now. Mycroft. Oh. Sherlock. Oh, uh, Mr. Holmes? Perhaps you don't remember me. I'm Dr. Watson. Uh, we met at the Diogenes Club a few years ago. I documented our encounter in a short story I gave the title The Greek Interpreter. He does remember you, Watson. My brother remembers everything, and that is why he is so valuable to the government. We are about to depart for the train station. I know. You know? Sherlock, I need your help. There are people who presently threaten both our country and the crown itself. You must help us with those methods of yours. Need? Help? Those are not words I would readily associate with you, Mycroft. I wrote you a letter, but you did not reply. And this is not about politics. It's about people. People similar to those whom you pretend to defend in your petty detective affairs. Everything is about politics with you, Mycroft. I'm not interested. Have some of your agents, your spies, or worse, undertake this job of yours. You are defending your people, and they have little to do with the people I choose to help, I can assure you. That is the point. You think exactly as they do. Who are they? The Merry Men. He is talking about the Merry Men. A band of idealistic terrorists. Sherlock, do please think about it. They are planning something diabolical. Your country needs you. You need me, Mycroft, and you are not the country. Although if your waistline expands very much further... Mrs. Hudson, tea will not be necessary. Dr. Watson, the train conductor, Mr. Parker, is aware that you will be seven minutes late. You are in the fourth car. The train will be waiting for you. Sherlock, enjoy your time in Staffordshire. And do please at least write to me on your return. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name, as always, is Rotundon. And we're back again with the second case on Sherlock. Let's go first person. That's how we like to play. Last episode, we finished the case of uh, the fate of Black Peter, Peter Carey. We solved that, passed it with flying colours, got everything right. And now we are starting the riddle on the rails. What a gloomy night. It was warmer inside the waiting hall. Since the station master told us that the train is about to arrive, we should not have to wait very much longer. Yes, at last. Attention, the train is arriving at the station. Please stand well away from the platform edge. I'll take your bags and your blasted archive suitcase. But, Holmes, the headlight, it's faded away. Something is wrong. I can't hear any sound from the incoming train. Excuse me, sir. Can you explain what has happened? I, I don't know. It, it's as if the train vanished into thin air. Holmes, say something. Quick, fetch a lantern and let us take a look. It's too dark. Only fog and rails, nothing else. Uh, there is no use in stumbling around here at night. We will come back tomorrow. Well, here we are again at Evesham Station. We have a full day ahead. Let us begin our investigation. Okay. 
here we are. We have to inspect the scene. So that was really quite odd, wasn't it? The train just disappeared seemingly out of nowhere. Uh, let's have a look at this railway map. Oh, we can take it, can this we? Map. Oh, cool. Okay. Sherlock the thief. First of all, let us examine the area where the okay, train Whoa, Watson, watch out. Where's he moonwalking? Um... Yeah, so it sounds like maybe after this one. I mean, I'm not sure if Mycroft will be involved in this one. But it definitely sounds like at least after this case, uh, Mycroft will definitely be involved. We'll see him again, I'm sure. Imagination talent helps you to visualise objects and events useful in limited situations. Okay. So this is what we saw. This is the place mm. where we saw the train vanish last night. Okay, empty bottle a there. Discarded item, possibly thrown from the train. There are no tracks or footprints on the ground. Hmm. Railway sleepers, nothing unusual. The rails. The rails have not been touched. There's nothing unusual here. Huh. Okay, so there's nothing to find at the crime scene. There are no signs to indicate that the train ran off the track, nor are there any other traces. There is nothing whatsoever. There are no clues. But then, a negative result is also a result. Oh, I see what you're getting at. No clues and you're smiling. Yes, Watson, I do smile on occasion. This mystery appears very promising. Um, so I guess the next thing to do would be talk to the conductor, or the station master. Good morning. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Yes, I remember you. I'm Station Master Everett. You were here last night. So, you are Mr. Holmes, the great detective. Will you be investigating what happened? I shall indeed. It is extraordinary that an entire train could disappear like that. And to think of all the poor people inside it, the passengers, the driver. Could you please give us any details about the train? Well, there was nothing so very special about it. At least not that I can recall. My memory's not what it used to be. <laughs> However, if you need it, you can have the train composition report. It's inside my office. Message to all stations, Mr. Robinson is located at Bridlington Station. I, we should meet this Mr. Robinson. I agree. Anything else that we need to take note of? This. Line, Nottingham to London. Composition, locomotive, coal car, first class car, postal wagon and special wagon ordered by Mr. Here's Robinson. Okay. So at least we have one person... Telegraph. That we can talk to, that we know know something. So we do need to go to Bridlington. But we'll check around here first. We'll talk to this guy again. According to the train composition report, there was a special wagon. What does that entail? That's a highly secure car ordered by a private party. Uh, it is generally to carry something of value. Uh, those wagons have iron walls, you know, without any windows. Uh, and they're fitted with a complex key lock. That is important information. Do you know what was inside this particular wagon? Certainly not. No, that's private. And it's not my responsibility to allot the wagons to whoever. Was there anything exceptional about any of the passengers aboard the train? What do you mean? Like officials? Uh, I wouldn't know. Oh, oh, but now that you mention it, yes, there was something. There was a message from Bridlington Station saying that the train had been delayed because of an issue with the passengers. But what kind of problem that they didn't say? That is interesting. You mentioned a problem at Bridlington Station. I should like to visit this station. Could you mark it on the local map? Of course. It's a suburban railway station. You might take a cab there. See you later, my good man. Okay, this fence opens up. Okay, that was handy. I'm telling you, honestly, sometimes in games like this, I will get so lucky. Like, 
If I hadn't have got that, I probably would have missed it. Probably would have just been lost forever. Now, is there anything here we can actually use to benefit us? Remains a of a building. Not so long ago. But I don't understand, Holmes. Why would anyone destroy the shed in such a manner? It was disassembled in great haste. It is most odd. Okay. Peculiar. Maybe that's something we could ask the Station Master. Was it Everett? I think Station, Ma Station Master Everett, was it? Wheel traces. Looks like, yeah, heavy vehicles. And say it looks like something quite heavy. Let's take a closer look. Good idea. Aha! Okay, I have to take... What, do I take the measurement of how long the... Interesting here. Oh no, the width to tell me what kind of vehicle it would be. The distance between the tracks is about six feet. God six damn. Inches. The vehicle would have been heavy as these tracks are quite deep. Okay, so it would have been these a large vehicle. Are relatively fresh and were made by a large truck loaded with materials. Okay, well for right now at least it sounds like the train was stolen. Sounds like the train was... No, but it didn't come past us, so how would it have made it into here? Hmm. This is confusing, isn't it, Watson? Not that you have anything to say, or anything to add, or anything. You, you don't really have anything at all. It appears that there was a small warehouse near your station, and that it was disassembled. Why is that? It was burgled overnight about two weeks ago. The police have already started their investigation, but I doubt that they'll find anything. What was inside the warehouse? Nothing of value. A few hundred feet of standby rails and some spare railway parts. But it wouldn't be easy to steal all of that. And why would anyone want to? Uh, the only thing to do now is to go to Bridlington. Okay, let's have a look. Let's see who we can talk to. Uh, maybe we're not supposed to be in here right now. Railway Some post more postal bags. bags. Yeah. That is Mr. Robinson. Okay. That is... Um, damn, what's his name? The dude that plays Sully and uh, Fred Flintstone. Cool guy. Who are you? Angry passenger. Okay. A s Watson. I'm going to shave that tash. Move yourself now, Station Master. You okay? Oh, hang on a second. Gap in the floor, sheet of paper. Aha! What again? Unbelievable the luck. Lucky we. For Robinson's machine, a significant sum. Robinson's machine. Oh, okay. Okay, Mr. Robinson is located at Bridlington. And this was, yeah, this was ordered by him, and he had it insured. Up to 50% of its value. £15,000, are you shitting me? Okay, so Mr. Robinson's not looking good so far, you know, we can say that right now. Let's talk to the Station Master of Bridlington. Good day to you, gentlemen. How may I help you? Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I am investigating the unfortunate disappearance of last night's train. I see. Uh, I'm Station Master Bertram, but my supervisor has not informed me about this. I do not know if... Uh, do not worry. I have only a few questions. Station Master Everett from Evesham told us that you reported a problem with some passengers last night. Indeed. This train is a regular line for those who work at Nottingham, but yesterday... Everyone was asked to get off the train here at my station. I've no idea why, and it delayed the train. But the worst of it is that now I have to deal with two furious passengers who are complaining about the company's service. They stayed here the whole night, but people do not usually pay much attention to the regulations, you see. There are very strict and clear rules. Paragraph 234 of Article 2G-43 states that in the event of a complaint, you must... Yes, yes, thank you. I understand. Apart from the passengers disembarking, did you notice anything else that was unusual last night? I did, and I mentioned it in my report to our higher management on the matter. What was it? Sorry, 
but I can't tell you. The station master's reports are confidential. Confidential, you say? How long have you been working here? I have worked here long enough to be uh, quite capable of managing a railway station. Let me speak frankly, Mr. Bertram. Your age and your lack of confidence in your position are quite apparent. You cannot deny that you have only recently completed your studies. I was at the top of my class. Listen here, young man. I am aware that you wish to protect yourself behind all these regulations, but I represent the law. And you are obstructing the investigation of an important case. I would suggest that you cooperate with Mr. Holmes. Think of your career. Ah, that is... Well, I'll tell you everything. First of all, I scolded the ticket inspector, for it was he who asked the passengers to leave the train. It was not his right to do so. He was very rude. And then, later on, I received a most peculiar telegram from my colleague at Chesterfield Station, the next stop along the line. What did the telegram say? Well, that was the peculiar thing. It was almost unreadable. It was full of errors and awfully vague. It was hard to understand if the train had correctly passed that station or not. You can read it for yourself. I completely agree. What is the Chesterfield Lailvay Atashion Trenlinair? I mean, they've got the 324, I'm assuming, right? They're arted. So it's either someone that can't speak English, I guess, or someone that is just, can't, just can't write well. So I guess we should talk to... We're trying to talk to the angry passenger first. This is an absolute scandal. It's always the same with these rail companies. No respect for the customer. Please calm down, sir. What is your concern? Concern? What is my concern? I'll tell you what my concern is. Last night, I were on the train, as usual, with my colleague, heading home. Then along came this ridiculous ticket inspector, who started arguing that our tickets were invalid. He made us get off the train, and he was extremely rude about it. Were you aboard the train that vanished last night? Yes. I heard that it disappeared. But I don't care because we would have stopped before then anyway. Our tickets were valid and no doubt about it. And then, to top it all, the ticket inspector pushed everyone else out too, except for a bunch of rich. Well, of course their type don't need a ticket. Can you recall anything more specific about this fortunate group? Well, yes. They were all foreigners. Spanish-looking toffs with snake eyes. Goodbye, sir. Okay, so... That is understandable for kind of what we... Um, what we assumed thus far. That it was potentially someone who can't speak English. We're obviously going to have to make our way to Chesterfield. First, the Chesterfield Station Master. Yeah, and a valuable... Okay. That's fine. So I guess all that is left is to talk... With Mr. Robinson. Good day to you, sir. Good day. To whom am I speaking? My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is... Are you a representative of this damned railway company? Because I have a complaint. We are not from the railway company. We are... Well, in that case, Mr. Shamrock Flomes, please excuse me. But I'm not in the mood for idle chit-chat at the moment. You must be Mr. Robinson, is that correct? Yes. I am leading the investigation of the disappearing train. It would help if you could answer my questions. Ah, well, all right. I have nothing to hide. I presume it was you who placed the order for the special wagon. Yes, it was to transport my valuable prototype safely to London. My prototype is a revolutionary device. It is capable of producing electricity. I'm a businessman and an engineer. I had already found several potential customers for my invention, but I was very optimistic about the director's board who were travelling on the train last night. You mentioned a director's board. Which company do they own? The Chilean Barcazas Company. I had made an appointment with them. Now they are lost, along with the train and my prototype. What do you know about the Barcazas Company? It's a large South American company. They showed a great deal of interest in my prototype, and they seemed wealthy enough to do business with. Hmm. This revolutionary machine of yours, was it very valuable? For God's sake, sir. It is priceless. It could change the world we live in. And yet, 
I was selling it for almost nothing. I am a humanitarian, you see. I do not know if I will ever be able to get over this disaster. I cannot believe that it disappeared with that damn train. Mr. Robinson, could you please clarify? Were you traveling alongside your prototype? Yes, I was. But I had to step off the train. And all because of this stupid station master. I received the telegram declaring that an important person, a Mr. Bromsby, wished to see you in the waiting room. I, I merely informed you of this. Mr. Bromsby is a wealthy gentleman. His interest in my invention was truly unexpected. So yes, of course, I agreed to see him. Unfortunately, he wasn't there. I thought perhaps he might have been delayed. So I chose to wait a while. But despite my requests, the train left the station without me. Absolutely unacceptable. The timetable is strict. We cannot wait any longer. The regulations require the train to be on time. You are an idiot. You will pay for it. I will sue you. According to this document, you have insurance for your prototype. Oh, thank God. Where did you find it? Near the telegraph station. I must have lost it when I tried to send a message, which I was prevented from doing. I apologize for that, but regulations state that public access to the telegraph is strictly prohibited. Upon my word, you keep on digging that hole of yours. You have no idea who I am. I see that you kept your grip sack with you. Why don't you leave it in the luggage room? I've had other things to think about. I lost my prototype. And this idiot station master just stands here doing nothing to help. Oh, but... Well, that won't do at all. Station master, I believe that the regulations state that any passenger luggage should be taken to the luggage room. I'll do it right away, sir. Sorry, sir. Look, Watson, a bundle of contracts. Very suspicious. We should study them carefully. This is an exclusive sales contract regarding the prototype invention dedicated to the appliance. Blah, 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 Emerson. Okay, so let's Robinson, underline these bits. An exclusive sales contract. Hmm. Anything else? Does not look it. This is an exclusive sales contract regarding. Yes, okay, that bit again. Exclusive sales contract. Hong Kong General. Mr. Robinson, Thomas Robinson. Ah, okay. Oh, is he? Yes, ah, okay. He's doing the same shit. He's telling people it's exclusive sales. It is very clear that this hmm. Mr. Robinson received prepayments from various people for his machine. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. Mr. Robinson is not looking good right now. He's looking like a shady motherfucker. I guess we're going to have to talk to him, and then we'll probably have to head over to Chesterfield. We'll speak to you, big boy. I will not move from here. All right, maybe we won't talk to you then. Okay, I think this is the perfect time for some deductions. So let's see what we can do. Whoa, okay, holy shit. All right, Coolio, Coolio. So, so, either the Chilean stay on the train was just a coincidence, a train conductor overlooked them. No, that is not a coincidence. The directors of the Chilean Barcazas company were intentionally left on the train. The controller removed all the passengers from the train except for the Chileans. I believe that, at least thus far. The loss of the prototype would bring a lot of easy money to Mr. Robinson thanks to the insurance and multiple fraudulent exclusive contracts. Or he's a victim. The loss of the machine is a... I'm not even going to think he's a victim right now. Okay, we're going to have to act like this dude has motive. So, with that said and our clues deducted, I feel like now we should really go to Chesterfield. Okay, we are here. Let's see what we have going on. Let's go through here. Anyone hit? Whoa. What is happening? Dude, are you okay? 
Can you not see me? Hello? How could you fall asleep at work like this? Excuse me, sir. Wake up. Ah, his breath. He must have swallowed half a distillery. And that explains the how. By his sleeping off the alcohol, you mean? Wake up, please, sir. Huh. What? The 18 hours 72 train has arrived? Good day to you. We are investigating the disappearance of last night's train, and we should like to ask you a few questions. Were there any passengers who got off that particular train at your station last night? No. Nobody, it seems to me. Although I did not leave my office, so... No doubt you were very busy. You don't say. You can't ever get any peace around here. Now you have to send a telegram each time a train arrives and departs. The station master Bertram from Bridlington showed me a strange telegram that he received from you last night. It concerned the train, but it was barely comprehensible. What? He's a fastidious little twerp, that Bertram. I remember everything quite clearly. It was late, and I was tired, but I did my work. So what? There's no need to be so petty. You were not tired. You were inebriated. Tell me the truth now, or I shall not hesitate to document your state in my report. My friend means that you will end up by being sacked from your position. All right. So I was drunk. I don't remember all of yesterday, to be truthful to you. Please don't go harsh on me. Holmes, this man has consumed a considerable <coughs> amount of alcohol. He's not entirely helpless yet, but... It will not be long before he is. Obviously, his testimony cannot be trusted. Okay, that's fine. I guess we're going to have to find some other shit that will help us out. The Morse code alphabet. I had thought that all station masters knew the Morse code, but apparently not. Hmm, okay. So we've got to check around here. I know we've got a deduction that we can do, but we won't do that yet. Let's go to the waiting hall. Oh no, we, we did come in here. That's my bad. Watson, seriously, you really don't have to get that close to me, man. We don't. Locked. I don't feel. There is no sense hmm, in asking okay. the station master to open it. We shall have to pick the lock. Sounds good to me. We're pretty good at picking these locks. We just have to get this one and line it up like this. Nice. And then the same with this. Is that how it works? No? I thought that's how it worked. This one? Am I an imbecile or that one maybe? Boom! Look at that. I mean, I don't even understand how they're different, but we'll take it. Okay, what's in here? What shouldn't I see? Freshly dirty, huh? Yeah. still muddy. We should ask about them. We fucking will, Sherlock. Don't you worry, son. I mean, I'm actually, like, actual real-life Rotondon me is actually doing more than Watson is. Bags were recently dragged here. Hmm. Ah, there they are. Remarkable vintage. There These they are. are. too expensive for a station master's wage. They were likely taken from the parcels. Shameful. Uh, excuse me? A handcar wheelbase. Interesting. It appears that elements of the same construction were scattered everywhere. Watson, please tell me, do you believe in magic? Of course not, Holmes. Then you are of the opinion that a train cannot simply disappear. Well, we both know that that is obvious. Why are you asking such peculiar questions? A little patience, Watson. You will understand my point quite soon. So, are you quite certain that you saw the train at Evesham Station? Well, yes, of course. We saw it coming. The headlights and heard the whistle. But that is it. We didn't see the train itself. Oh, uh, but... Oh, Holmes, I'm a little confused. 
The dismantled handcard seems directly connected to our mystery. Reconstruct the handcard to see if we can imitate the vanished train. Okay. So I'm assuming we just have to go up to this. Cool. So, now here we have the fake train that we saw approaching Evesham Station last night. Doesn't look much like a train to me. Be patient, Watson. I haven't finished yet. Try using your imagination. <coughs> Our train requires only a headlight and a steam whistle. Let's put all this the shit long, on. The head. Yeah. The steam whistle. Holmes, what can we do to make the steam whistle work? If fire extinguisher. I picked it up. My dear Watson, we shall need a fire extinguisher. Indeed. The fire extinguisher. There you go. Now let us see what we have here. Okay. First of all, let us pump the pump the pressure inside. Okay, so we have to pump this. The steam whistle is ready to be used. So use the steam whistle and do the light. Ah, oh, wow. Wow, 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 Sherlock. Watson, I do believe that we have created an exact replica of the train that vanished in front of us last night. The criminal mind can be most inventive. I am somewhat in awe. So, such a thing is possible. If someone went to all the trouble of creating this fake train, then it was surely with the intention of stealing the real one. Ah, Watson, you should not jump to conclusions. In fact, this does not tell us very much at all, except that the train did not evaporate into thin air. Although you half suspected it. Ah, at any rate, we now need to find where the real train might be hidden. I suggest we use my archives to find a more detailed map of our surroundings. Well, I hope that justifies our having to load your massive archive suitcase onto the cab. It made us extremely unpopular with our driver. To check these archives, let me deduct first, actually. Um, stolen rail track, fake train, spare parts of a hand car. Okay, the train never reached Evesham. It disappeared early and was faked by somebody using the hand car and spare train parts. That is correct. Or well, that's how it appears anyway. Now we have two maps. We must combine them properly. Okay. It is. Boom. There is a side branch to the railway. Its first switch is located between Bridlington and Chesterfield stations. There is one more station to be visited. It is located between Chesterfield and Evesham. And there should be a side railway to the nearby quarry. Okay. There is a small section of a railway at the end of Evesham Station. Okay, guys, what I think we'll do is we'll leave this episode here, the first episode of Case 2. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I think it's a good introductory episode into this case, just kind of giving you a few, not necessarily suspects, but people to be suspicious of, I guess, Mr. Robinson and uh, some of the station masters. But, like I said, we're going to leave it there. If you like the video, leave a like, subscribe, as always, if you look forward to more. And part two should be out in no time. So I will speak to you then.